Yo, are we on? Hey, we're on. What's up, YouTube? It's been a while. I hope all you guys are having a great day today. If you're new, welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys an inside look at some of my favorite tees in my t-shirt collection. Let's check it out. This first ball, like a see my birth will grow from it. Life is peaks and valleys, I flow for the summit. You know, if I plummet, I will rise again. You can see it in my eyes, I still strive to win. Fireflies are thin, like fireflies in the winds of change. You get past rims and things. So, to start things off, let's talk about the one that I have on right now. This is a vintage Wu Tang t shirt. I got it from Vintage by Round Two. So shout out to the guys over there round two. It's actually one of my favorite tees in my collection for sure. Um, I don't own a lot of rap tees or hip hop tees. I love those things, but I only have a few to be honest, but this being um, one of my favorites. I like the fact that it's simple. It's just black and a kind of like a goldenrod yellow. But the reason I like it is Wu-Tang is one of my favorite hip hop or rap groups of all time. I love a lot of their songs, but one of my favorite ones is the one that's on the back, Cream. Cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. You know how it goes. Every single member in that group is a legend. And um, yeah, it's just a simple tee that is just, uh, I guess, iconic, classic. Next, we got a college dropout Kanye West tee. I mean, yeah, Kanye West is one of my favorite rappers. The first three albums that Kanye West came out with were my favorite. College dropout, the first album he came out with being my favorite amongst the three. I love that it's in that deep burgundy and maroon, uh, reminiscent of the college I played basketball at, which is Mount Sac College. And it's just, yeah, it's just a dope tee. Um, listening to him since day one. But yeah, the reason I like a lot of Kanye West's music is just because of um, his style and his sound. He would use uh, music from different eras and genres, and he would fuse that with his um, with his lyrics, with his modern style at the time, with hip hop beats and uh, dope rap lyrics. So I love the fact that he would kind of bridge the gap between old school and new school. All right. It's getting a little hot in here, so don't mind if I turn on the fan so you might hear it circulating a bit. Wait a minute. All right, so next we got a Grateful Dead tee. Super sick. Now, I don't wear a lot of tie-dye tees or things that are super loud and flashy like this, but this is an exception. This is just such a cool shirt, honestly. 92, not fade away. And basically, this is one of my favorite Grateful Dead tees. It is not the rarest or uh, the most sought after, but to me, this is the coolest one. One, because I love basketball. Uh, two, the history behind it. If you know the history behind this tee, it's really cool. And if you don't, go ahead and look it up. Yeah, I love, I love what it's all about and what they fought for. It's, it's basically the Lithuanian Olympic basketball team, and they made it all the way to getting the bronze medal in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. So look up the history on this tee, it's really cool. All right, moving on. We have a vintage 1980, 1979, 1980 Nike Geisha shirt from the Nike pinwheel era. So I'm gonna show you the tag first. Like in the 70s, Nike would use these pinwheel tags. It's really faded so you can't really see it. I don't know if the camera can make it out. On the side there, you can see it's from the Cascade runoff. I mean, what makes this tee so special? Well, for me at least, um, if you look up close, you see that there's a lot of detail. You got the geisha here and you got a guy running right here. It's cool because he even has Nikes on. Also, I love the fact that you see the cherry blossom flowers right there on her dress, as well as the Cascade runoff uh, graphic right there. And then right here on her, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a sash or her robe, or whatever, but you can see that it has those, uh, the pattern is the two people running, which is uh, a graphic that Nike used in a few other of their tees. But yeah, 
Um, in general, I love uh, Japanese culture as well as Japanese fashion and the food. This is just really, really cool. Uh, to me, it's one of the coolest uh, Nike tees ever made. Even if it had no hype and no value to it, it's just a, it's a tee that I would still love. It's just really nice. As you can see, there is a lot of paint on it. But I don't mind that. It's uh, it adds to the character, as we say. Who knows? Maybe uh, someone back back in the day used this uh, used this as their tea uh, while they would do their artwork or painting. Who knows? I think it's cool. A lot of Nike collectors, or even T-shirt collectors in general, or people who are just uh, Nike enthusiasts, would say that this is one of the most iconic, I guess, most iconic Nike tees. All right, next. Man, um, I got this one at Rose Bowl. I mean, for starters, I just lo even love the shade of the blue. Kind of like a bluish purple. I love all the graphics on it. But here it has a lot of the Nike uh, graphics or sayings. There is no finish line. You got the Nike swooshes on the plane. Nike swoosh on the balloon. Just do it. Employee Appreciation Day, May 6, 1993. So, yeah, basically the uh, quick story behind the shirt is that Nike would have a lot of like Nike picnics or employee appreciation days, events like that. And they would give these shirts out to them, not to the general public. So that's what makes these kind of rare. Regardless, I just love the graphics on it. And here's the back. You gotta love that big Nike swoosh logo on the back right there. Yeah, really cool. Uh, so one of my favorite basketball players of all time, the GOAT, Michael Jordan. It is a bootleg Nike tee, but as some say bootleg is better. Not all the time. But in this case, uh, I think it is. A lot of the cool vintage wrap tees or a lot of tees in general that are bootleg are very unique. Uh, this being a prime example of that. You can see it's kind of faint, but it says it says Nike in the background. N-I-K-E and the swoosh. And then you got Michael Jordan uh, five times right here. If you guys didn't know my favorite color is sky blue. Love the colors on it, love the graphics. The tricolored collar. Here's the back. The back is insane. So you got that bootleg Nike swoosh on the back, but then you have all these words going from the top to the very bottom. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but just the beginning says, Nike is an expression of quality craftsmanship and integrity of design from the selection of the fabric to the execution of every detail. Anyways, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. It's pretty long, but the, the bottom says, just do it. Nike is full of American dreams. All right, now this next one is pretty flashy. I don't often wear tees with a bunch of faces on them, but uh, it's kind of hypocritical because this next one has like so much faces. Five more faces on a shirt than any other shirt I've seen. This one is a really cool graphic shirt. You don't see it too often either. On the front right there, it says, one of these people can save your soul. And you have all these iconic people uh, from different eras, different types of movies, different cartoon characters, politicians, religious people, iconic people in history, musicians, athletes, and then you got Jesus Christ right there. So you have all these uh, different people right here, all these iconic people in history. It says one of these people can save your soul. And this is the back, only one. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible right here, Acts 4, 12, let me read that. Salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Everyone else is kind of uh, blanked out. You can only see their, make out their silhouette. And you got Jesus Christ right there. But yeah, let me give you a closer look at that, nice and slow, so you can kind of see the different uh, people on the shirt. Yeah. I'm so hyped that I, I remember when I first got this one uh, in LA. It's stayed in my collection since. It's one of my favorite shirts. All right, moving on. This one took me forever to find. And here's the graphic. It's Two Gun Mickey. To a lot of Disney tea collectors, this is one of the coolest graphics. You got the cowboy or Two Gun Mickey right there shooting the guns up into the air. And uh, the shirt, if you can make it out, um, is not white. It's a, a creamish color, really nice. I mean, what makes this one so cool to me is, uh, well, it's just the thrill of the hunt. I think a lot of us thrifters or collectors, people like us could all admit and agree that the thrill of the hunt is a big 
reason why we do this stuff. It's a big reason why we appreciate this stuff. When you look for something for a long time and then it takes a long time, but when you finally get your hands on it, you finally find it, it's something that you don't usually want to let go of. It's something you want to keep around and keep in the collection. And uh, to me, this is one of the coolest Disney or Mickey T's ever made. I mean, first of all, it's Mickey Mouse, the most iconic um, cartoon character made by Walt Disney and uh, one of the most iconic cartoon characters of all time. This one is just really, really nice to me. Yep. Every time I go to Disneyland, I wear this one. Okay. I know I overuse the word favorite a lot, but this is one of my favorite shows. It is Friends. You got the different characters right there. You got Ross, Rachel, Monica, Joey, Phoebe, Chandler. Chandler being my favorite character. He's just so funny. And it is a t-shirt that came out when the show first came out in 1995. And what makes this shirt really cool for me, I got a sister and this is a show that we would watch together all the time when we were younger. And uh, it is one of the shows, it's just memorable for me because I shared so many laughs with her, you know, watching this show. So many great laughs and great memories uh, watching the show together and, and talking about the different funny things and jokes or uh, you know crazy things that would happen in the show uh, this is this is a uh, definitely a very uh, nostalgic shirt for me I love the little designs right there very minimal nothing on the back simple on the front and you just got that black gray white uh, I guess box logo across the chest and you got all the main characters of friends right there and then I love those uh, little shapes that are uh, along the T. Who's your favorite uh, Friends character? Let me know in the comments. Mine's Chandler, funniest dude on there, but each character has their own uh, thing to them. So um, all of them together is just, uh, is just hilarious. So that's Friends. All right, so the next one is a huge graphic T. Huge in size, as it is a double XL, but also um, a huge graphic. And on it features a very huge Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy Jeans, graphic on the shirt. Some people refer it to as the Tommy Man as it has that Tommy, uh, that Tommy Hilfiger hero on the front. The graphic kind of reminds me of the artwork of a lot of like uh, pop art. I love how you have that buff Tommy Man just swinging a punch right there about to knock somebody out. Yeah, to me it's a bit of a mystery. I haven't really seen too many people with this shirt. I remember I saw it um, when Round 2 first moved to LA from Virginia. They did an interview uh, with the hundreds, uh, they were showing some of their favorite pieces that this is one of the ones that they were talking about in, in the article or interview. And I remember when, when I saw it, I was like, man, I gotta get that tea. Searching for it, uh, never found it. And uh, three years later, I went to New Jersey with my dad on a vacation trip to see my family. We went to a vintage store called Metropolis. It's one of the coolest vintage stores in New York, you guys gotta check it out if you do ever go there. Yeah, surprisingly, I got it for like, probably like 50 bucks, but it is a shirt that I knew I had to get. I remember seeing it, I pulled it from the rack and I was like, no. I, I was hyped. I was definitely hyped and I knew I had to get it. And there you have it, the Tommy Man. All right, and now we have a 1988 Akira T. Look at that graphic right there. Look at the detail in his arm. And even his cape in general. And then you got the simple, bold Akira font right there. To me, one of the sickest anime tees I've ever seen. Um, there's a lot of different Akira shirts out there. Uh, this one being one of the coolest of those designs. Now, if you haven't seen this movie, go watch it. Do yourself a favor and go watch it. It is a must see, especially if you love anime. It is a classic anime movie and at the time it set the standard for a lot of the animes to come. A lot of the anime uh, cartoon series or movies that came out around that time. Even if you just watch a little small uh, snippet or video on YouTube of Akira, you can see that it was ahead of its time and a lot of detail in that movie. So really cool. And this is the back right there and yeah. All right, so this next one is another Nike tee. Definitely another one of my favorite Nike tees in my small but loved collection. It's this Nike bubble shirt. I love all the different colors on there. Let me give you a little close up of those rainbow colored bubbles. 
across the shirt. Just a simple design, it just looks like bubbles from far away and you come up close and you see the Nike slogan right there, just do it. Nike swoosh right there at the bottom bubble. I like the fact that it is on a heather gray shirt. Easy to wear. And I think the colors and the graphics on the tee pair really, really well with, let me get this real quick, the Nike Air Max 1. 97 Sean Witherspoons. My pair is really faded. I wear it to the gym, I wear it hiking, I wear it a lot. These are beaters for me. I love how um, over time, the more you wear it, it gets those frays, fading and discolorations and more character the more and more you wear it. But yeah, I just think it's such a sick uh, combination. I probably wear like just like black or dark gray shorts with this tee and then these shoes at the bottom. Like for me, I don't like to be too matchy matchy. I wouldn't wear like this with like a big yellow tee or something that's super, super loud and rainbow-ish. Cause uh, I would just keep it simple. I like that it's just a simple shirt and you've got the multicolored bubbles across the chest and the, the shoes just go perfectly with it. I think it's just a sick combination. All right, and this one is a vintage 1985 Air Jordan by Nike Wings logo shirt. As you can see, it is that 80s blue tag by Nike, made in USA, tri-blend. Yeah, it's it's super thin. And what makes these Wings logo tees so cool is that these were made around the same time Michael Jordan was a rookie. Michael Jordan was a rookie around 84, 85. And in 1985 to like, uh, I would say about 1987, I hope I'm correct on that. Um, around the same time of the Air Jordan 1 and the Air Jordan 2, they used the Wings logo. The Air Jordan Jumpman logo was made um, uh, in 1988 when the Air Jordan 3s came out and they started using the Jumpman logo on the shoes and uh, and as well as on the merch. Yeah, so this is when the Wings logo was still used. So this is the original Air Jordan logo. What makes this one really uh, dope is the fact that uh, there are different colorways of the 1985 Wings logo tees. You'll see one that's like red with black uh, as well as royal blue with black as well as a white tee and a gray tee with the red wings logo. I had a black one with red uh, with a red graphic. But never have I or any of my uh, friends who collect have seen a Carolina blue and heather gray colorway. I haven't seen this colorway anywhere. Um, I actually got this one off of uh, this guy who, who his dad was uh, a guy who worked for Nike. It's a bit of a mystery to us actually. We don't know exactly how many of these ones were made or if it's a sample or a prototype it's a bit of bit of a mystery to be honest but i guess that's what makes it so cool who knows maybe it's just a one-off or um i don't know i'm not sure but uh, as you guys know like i i've mentioned before sky blue is my favorite color michael jordan's one of my favorite players of all time so um with all that said it's just such a cool piece to have all right so this next one is a rap tee and as i've mentioned i don't own a lot of rap tees but this is a grail and one I definitely had to have. This is a vintage bootleg Tupac tee from the late 90s. And as you can see, it kind of looks like a vintage Tommy Hilfiger flag, which makes it unique because it's it's like the Tommy Hilfiger flag, but with the Tupac Shakur on it. Definitely a cool rap tee bootleg in my opinion. And then you have the day he was born to the day he died right there. So some people call this the Tupac Memorial tee, 1971 to 19... 96 and here's the back feel free to uh, like pause the video so you could go ahead and read it Here I'll put this right here so you can kind of see it Another one of my favorites in my collection not super old or super hyped But it was one of my favorite cartoons. This is a 2001 Samurai Jack shirt Samurai Jack was an anime that didn't last too long but and it, I think it only went for a few seasons, but it was definitely unique. It's one of the few cartoons um, that was like this at the time. But if you have a chance, go ahead and go on YouTube or whatever and um, check out some of the episodes from Samurai Jack. I, I definitely think it's a cartoon you'll appreciate, and I hope you like it as much as I do. But yeah, I like to get things that are nostalgic, memorable, that hold memories that remind me of my childhood or things from high school or whatever. This one definitely takes me back. But yeah, here's another look at it. All right, so this one is a streetwear piece. This is a diamond cold as ice tee. And it's just, you got this huge uh, diamond right there. To me, one of the coolest diamond shirts 
that were made. Sure, I know, you could find diamond anywhere these days, right? You could find it at thrift stores, and it's not really sought after these days, uh, which is fine. Uh, but, you know, back when I was in high school, a lot of people wore diamond. And I remember this tea is uh, one that would always elude me. I could never find it. Um, so I'm glad to, I'm glad to own it years later. And it's cool because you got this big hand. It's like a lady's hand with like, uh, with like unique nail polish right there. And she's holding this huge diamond. I think it's one of the cooler graphics from um, not just diamond, but out of that era, the mid to late 2000s. Uh, this is one of the coolest tees that me and my homies always were trying to look for. Yeah, that, like I said, the same era as like, you know, Diamond, Huff, Crooks and Castles, um, Tan Deep, The Hundreds. This is from that era, and this takes me back to the high school days. <sighs> Alright, you're probably wondering why it kind of looks different right now or why it changed. It's because I filmed that video a few weeks ago and I was never able to complete it. I had a lot of friends' birthdays and weddings to attend to, work was busy, you know how it goes. But anyways, I would like to finish the video right now. Now you're probably wondering why the rack is not here. Well, a lot of things on the rack, um, they sold. Uh, a lot of my friends or uh, vintage shop owners or collectors, um, they wanted a few of my pieces. Um, I sold a few of them, but there's a few more I wanna show you guys right now. But let's go ahead and jump into that right now. So, you, you gotta have a vintage apple tea in your collection i mean it's not that serious it's not that big of a deal i'm just being dramatic but i've owned many different um you know macintosh or many different vintage apple teas this one was my favorite one out of all the ones that you know ever came out so this is the mac attack 95 yeah i love the fact that it's a computer with like arms and legs you got that spear you got that shield ready for battle ready to take down all the other competition are you team Android? Are you team Apple? <laughs> but yeah, there it is guys. My favorite vintage Apple tea in my collection. The Mac Attack 95. Now real quick, something that I thought that was cool that I wanted to show you guys. I know some of my, the other teas um, earlier in this video, um, at least the first part of this video, I was kind of showing you some streetwear uh, from like the 2000s, you know, like the mid to late 2000s stuff that like me and my friends wore in. High school, the hundreds, uh, maybe it's like something that you guys always thrift and you'll always find it. It, it is common, it's nothing rare at all, but that doesn't matter too much to me. I just think this is a super cool and clever take on the vintage Apple designs and shirts. So um, as you can see, that is one of the old um, original Apple or Macintosh logos. And this is what the hundreds did with this graphic as you can see it has the same colors as the rainbow apple but they did it in a form of the bomb which the hundreds is known for if you guys know their slogan the hundreds is huge so what makes it even cooler is that instead of well one of apple's uh, slogans is uh think big instead of think big this one says think huge because the hundreds is huge um and then right there, think huge. So it basically is the hundreds take on the vintage Apple graphics. And I think it's a cool nod to the past. Yeah, really cool. And if you look at it, it's like super cracked and distressed, giving it that nice character. But yeah, I, um, I actually got this one for cheap. Probably like, I forgot if I got it like eight bucks, 10 bucks, something like that, something cheap. I got it. Um, at 2nd Street in LA with my boy Jet. Man, this one is extra special. Let's first show the can before we show the shirt. This is the original Bathing Ape can. And even the can itself uh, sells for a, a decent amount. It's cool when you find like the original packaging and stuff like that. But yeah, that's the can. And this, my friends, is a vintage Bape tea, hand screen printed by Nigo himself. As you guys know, Nigo is the creator of Bape. Bape came out in 1993. As you guys can already tell, obviously, it's the big ape head, which Bape is iconic for. But what makes this even cooler is the, the print is way bigger than usual. That It even goes beyond the shirt, if you see what I mean. 
Like it even goes stretches beyond the neck. It's just an iconic graphic that Beep is known for and it's extra special because it was hand screen printed by Nigo himself. So anyways, unfortunately I will be selling this one. I know a lot of people are interested in it. Never wanted to sell it, but I don't fit it anymore. I've been working out a lot lately and eating a lot too. And um, it just doesn't fit me anymore. I prefer things to be a little bigger now. I like to wear like larges to extra large. Just a little baggier. But yeah, if anyone's interested, please hit me up. A little distressed, a little faded. Again, really nice character to it. Definitely a Bape Grail, for me at least. Oh, and another Bape Grail. There's another tea I'll be getting, so I don't have it here yet. But it will be coming in the mail soon. But yeah, uh, there's this tea that I've always wanted. And it's a Bape tea with Biggie on it. And he's wearing a Bape jacket. You guys got to see it if you haven't. And there's a... A crazy story behind it, so I want you to want to talk about the shirt real quick. And since I don't have it, here's a picture of it. This is the Bape Biggie photo tee, shot by Sean Mortensen and put out in 2002. From what I understand, the story goes it wasn't even Biggie's jacket, but instead it was the photographer's. He put it on for the shoot and thought it was dope. Biggie liked it. And Nigo, who was also a fan of Biggie's music, got word of that and custom made some stuff for him in Biggie's size. As Bape didn't really make bigger sizes or stuff larger than 2XL. But unfortunately, before the customs even got to Biggie, he had passed away. I love both Nigo and Biggie. Both to me are creative geniuses in their own right. So to have this on a tee is pretty cool to see. Such a grail. Let's move on to the next one. Bump, 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 bump. One of the best yet. Haha. <laughs> Woo! I've wanted this tee for so long, so I'm very, very, very happy and grateful to have this piece in my collection. Now, to me, Big L was one of the best. Now, when I think about Big L, or I listen to his music, or even just look at this graphic on this tee, a few things come to mind when I hear the name Big L. I think master lyricist, crazy imagination, and amazing delivery. Bars for days, for sure. Now a lot of people remember his seven or eight minute freestyle with Jay-Z. Um, that's definitely an iconic freestyle you guys have to check out. But one of my personal favorite songs from Big L was Put It On. But yeah, um, you got Big L in the booth right there rapping. And right here it says Big L at DND. 1998 and this graphic this photo was taken by right there it says photo by ricky powell let's get an up close look at that so we could pay homage and give correct credit to the one who took this photo an iconic photo of big l in the booth right there and then in the back it says the big picture as you can see but yeah um i would say it's one of my you know rarer shirts in my small beloved collection man but what i do gotta say about big l and i think a lot of people would agree is that at the time big l was one of the best rappers in the east coast at the time um unfortunately big l had passed away at a very very early age so big respects to big l now this is one of the tees that i've been hunting for for years now there are a few other collectors that own this one but at least for me maybe it was easier for them but for me it was tough to to get my hands on. The crazy story behind this tee is that there was this guy who's a big fan of Big L and he actually thrifted this in the Goodwill a few years ago for only two bucks. That's insane. Imagine pulling this off the Goodwill racks. Oh my goodness, that would be the score of the day. Also in that same Goodwill found Big L vinyls in the same Goodwill. But yeah, there's the back, Big L. And again, there's another look at the front. And there you have it, the 1998 Big LT. All right, last but not least, because this video is way too long, let's go ahead and get to the last piece of the day. Dragon Ball Z was one of my favorite shows as a kid. Man, I, I don't know, I just love, I love Dragon Ball Z. Everything from the storyline, the, the animation, the characters and their, their like special powers or like when they go super sane and stuff like that all that stuff is like super dope i have a lot of great memories of watching that show with my friends or even in my childhood 
you know being a little kid and kind of like hopping from sofa to sofa and like doing like different like dragon ball z stuff you know what i mean but um come on don't, don't even lie i'm pretty sure some of you guys out there who watch the show you know you would kind of like mimic the characters whoever your favorite was now this shirt is not necessarily a, a tee that is like you know worth a crazy amount or anything um it's just a tee that i think is super cool out of all the dragon ball z t-shirts i've ever seen this one's my favorite because this one is my favorite dragon ball z character of all time let's get into this capsule corp right there now of course it's the back that i really want to show you guys bam you got trunks right there looking super sick look at the detail the darks, the lights, the fades, the way he looks. I always thought Trunks was the coolest looking character in Dragon Ball Z, especially when he has his blue hair, but you know, he's going, he's going like Super Saiyan over here. He had the sickest fit out of all the Dragon Ball Z characters. But what makes this one extra cool is this. Watch this. I'm gonna um, take a picture with Flash. I grew up with Dragon Ball Z, so to me, this is like a super sick shirt. 50 bucks, I paid 50 bucks for this one has 3m around the capsule corp and trunks of graphics like that whole ring just glows bright dang that's crazy do you see that dang look at those 3m graphics just shine super bright there's the t without the flash without the 3m shining and then there it is right there all right <clears throat> all right cool that's it there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed that segment of the video. Those are basically my favorite graphic tees in my graphic t-shirt collection. Let me know in the comments down below which you guys like the best. Or give me your top five. Which ones do you think were the top five tees in my graphic t-shirt collection? Like I said in the beginning of the video and throughout, I definitely don't own the rarest collection. Um, I don't have the best in quality or quantity. Um, I kind of just kept the ones that I really love or the ones that mean a lot to me and um, I'm kind of leaning towards being more minimalistic. I'm trying to just uh, minimize and have less and just trying to keep the ones that I really love. Uh, the ones that have great memories behind it, a great story behind it or I love that certain cartoon or that movie or that rapper. Just the ones that really represent me i guess but yeah just trying to minimize my closet and be a little more simpler live a little more simple and just keep the ones that i really love and the ones that i wear and wear often but um yeah let me know what kind of content you guys would like to see um if i feel like i'm up to it i'll definitely try to put out that content for you guys but yeah man i just want to end the video like this um i just want to give a little two cents of my mind i love collecting and i love this hobby of mine and I love clothes and shoes and hunting after these like grails but the truth is all this stuff is temporary um, and that's just the honest truth all this stuff is temporary more importantly than collecting material objects is collecting memories I know it sounds corny but that's the truth like I just love spending time with like family and friends and you know I'm making memories and documenting all of that so although I love clothes and shoes and all these things and I'm definitely gonna like um, share that content with you guys on this on this YouTube I, I really want to use this YouTube as a creative outlet but also to like document like significant moments in my life and and even maybe the ones that are not as significant just the mundane everyday things like whether it's like work or uh, my stuff from church um, spending time with my friends and family and just eating and uh, just living life man so like I said more important than material objects is the memories so I want to show you guys a little like some random snippets of me and my friends and stuff like that so but yeah at this point I just want to say thank you guys so much for rocking with me I truly appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart um, as you noticed probably from my YouTube and Instagram I've been out of the game for the longest time and uh, at this point, like, I just want to post content that I'm passionate about and use YouTube as just a creative outlet, just for fun. You know, just doing it because I genuinely like it and, you know, just sharing the things that I'm interested in, passionate about, and, and just share more snippets and moments of my life. But um, anyways, um, that's basically the end of the video. I know it was a super long one, so thank you for even watching. 
Um, if you made it this far in the video, um, <laughs> thank you so much. If you'd like to go ahead and hit that subscribe and go ahead and follow me um, if you want to see any more future content. If you want to follow me on my Instagram, um, it's Joey Uplift. That's joey.uplift. And my other Instagram is The Thrift Plug. That's the.thrift.plug.